So for me personally, the most frustrating thing about fishing for walleyes in central Minnesota, same with Wisconsin, uh, anywhere with clear water, is the bite window is so short, so minuscule. I mean, you might as well not even go out other than an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. We call that flash bites. A short, short window where you got 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes on a really, really good day, an hour, where you'll graph fish and maybe get a few of them to bite. Outside of that, I have no idea where they go. I mean, I've got a theory that they slide back out into deeper water because the only handful on this lake I've ever caught in midday have been out in like 40 to 55 feet of water. Uh, and I guess you get the odd one up in the weeds if you're fishing for panfish or you're cameraing around to see what's in the area. Occasionally you'll see a walleye, but man, they're just tough. So my buddy Nick Linder and I came out here last night, and got all set up, popped all of our holes up shallow while there was still plenty of daylight just because you don't want to be drilling in prime time. It's such a short bite window that you just, you have to capitalize on every opportunity to catch a fish. And right at sunset, I believe it was four, there's a fish, no way. This would be really good timing if it's a walleye. And right at 4.30, right at sunset, we caught our first eye. And we had about an hour of just fast and furious action. And uh, then it just stops and it's game over. And so we came out this morning. This is acting pikey, but it could be a big walleye. So we came out this morning to try to see if we could get on another flash bite, sunrise on. And what is this? Sorry, I'll be right back. Oh, big walleye. <laughs> and obviously, it's paying off. What are the odds of that? I can't think when there's a fish on my graph and talk at the same time, so I try to just ignore it. And then it actually bit. This is insane. All right, I'm gonna put this fish back and then uh, I'll keep rambling. So cool, man. All right, so that one came in and smoked a little VMC rattle spoon. It's just a confidence bait for me where whether a fish is active, inactive, you can pound it, you can get really aggressive with it, make those rattles click, but you can also slow down and just wiggle it. I really like these metallic-y colors, shiny colors, uh, in this clear water once you got some daylight down there. And sunny days and it just looks natural if it's overcast gloomy or you're fishing in dark then obviously glows really uh shine in that situation but when they're tough and fussy there's something about that metallic -y perch just looks natural we're set up on the edge of a big feeding flat it's six to ten feet of water weeds come up to about three feet under the surface and what we did is we drilled really high percentage holes on the edge of that flat. So I mean, every single hole I drilled, I used live scope to see exactly where the weed edge stopped. So every hole is within about a foot of that weed edge to say maybe eight feet off of it. Just that kind of narrow strip right where that water, where those weeds taper off in 14, 15, 16, and you got kind of a little shelf from that 16 out to 18, 19 and they cruise out like a highway and it's just a high percentage deal where they're following that kind of like a deer trail. And off behind me is like say 30 feet of water, it dumps off, but I really for flash bite walla is just like finding big pieces of structure, big feeding flats, weed flats, but then setting up in high percentage areas. If there's a little tiny point, got something riding through high. If there's a little tiny point that sticks out or a corner or just anything different, this looks pikey. Oh, <laughs> come on, are you kidding me? And so last night, I ended up popping a big, big walleye. We didn't put a tape on it, but it was high 20s and super thick. And that came on a dead stick. Just a little VMC Barbarian treble hook with a small fat head, skin hooked in the back, set about a foot off bottom. And uh, super key, anytime you're walleye fishing, uh, and it's not on a walleye factory where you're just crushing them like Upper Red Lake or whatever where you can't manage two lines. But for us, the, the opportunities to catch fish are, 
they're just slim, they're small, it's a tight window, tough bite, and so doubling your opportunities to catch fish is obviously huge. But then also, you know, everybody talks about calling fish in, they're coming to your spoons, your ripping wraps, your whatever, and then they might slide off and hit the dead stick, which of course is important, but we just use them to also cover water and help dial in the path that those fish are following or the depth that they're at. If it's a steeper break, I'll always put either a dead stick up shallow or a dead stick out deep, and then I'll be jigging in the other one. And whichever one goes off, then you, you know, slide up or slide out. So you're on that line and it just helps you double, you know, double your odds of catching them, but also narrowing down that depth range that they're working. And this is kind of a, a more gradual slope before it dumps off into deep water. So now I'm literally just using the dead stick and the jigging spoon to, to basically cover that road, that highway that those fish are following on the weed edge. My dead stick is set up just about a foot off of the weeds. You can see it on live scope, maybe two feet off of those weeds. And I'm just maybe eight feet out from that. So I'm covering that like 10 foot strip. That's kind of a, like a, a highway that those fish are following, feeding, roaming on that edge and just trying to uh, make sure that we get these things in front of their face. Hey Brett, hi. Do you, do you have any opinion on uh, opinions on walleyes? Um, I don't like them. A lot of the time, sometimes I do. There's either a walleye or a rock bass about to eat that dead stick. You can see him on my. Oh, maybe it's a big bike. Is he going down? It's going down. What? <laughs> Not a rock bass. I'm just hoping it's not a pike. Oh yeah, it's a walleye. Dude! I was ready to go home. This is a miracle fish. This is a miracle fish. What the heck? And uh, what are the odds it bites as you walk over to say bye? <laughs> yeah, I walk over to talk about how crappy walleyes are. Oh, please and thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I lied. I actually like walleyes. They're, they're like my favorite fish to target. <laughs> and they're really easy to catch and they always bite every time you graph one. No, it, this morning was brutal. This is literally a, a trip saver. <laughs> Just watching all these tiny little perch and rock bass on the screen and ready to say it's time to call it. And then I watched this guy actually slide up out of the weeds and uh, came up and was just eyeing up my dead stick and I just figured it was gonna be a pike because it just, most of the time when I'm out here, as soon as the perch show up in the rock bass, it's game over for walleyes. And it's like when we come out in the evening flash bite, you see lots of little perch around and then as soon as they disappear, then the walleyes show up and it goes against everything you hear about fishing by bait and fishing in bait. Uh, but they're areas that have bait and they just know that uh, it's not safe to be around and visible and not hidden when the walleyes are on the prowl. All right, so that one came on a dead stick and my dead stick setup is just really, really simple. Small little treble hook with a shiner. A couple things that I do, I've put videos out on this and you can, you can look those up, I can link them down below. But a couple quick hitters is, I like hooking that minnow, just skin hooked through the back with the hook point pointed forward towards its head. So a lot of the times, Walleyes are gonna grab that thing head first and then you know that that hook is pointed in the right direction. I like hooking them in the back like that so that they hang straight and you still get quite a bit of movement out of that minnow. It'll still swim around. Uh, sometimes you can tail hook and really let that minnow swim around and do its thing. And you gotta just read the fish that day. There's been days where I watch fish come up to the minnow and that minnow starts swimming away from it and that walleye is just like, nah, I'm gonna slide back down to bottom. I don't feel like working that hard for a meal. Then there's some days where they want it trying to get away from them. And then all I'll do to kind of change that is I use a big split shot. And I've said this before, I use it as an anchor point. I slide it down if I want that minnow to not have a whole bunch of range of motion. Maybe have it within six inches of that minnow. Cause then it's like the pivot point for how far that minnow can go to the side. You're gonna get a little bit of swing too with the main line. But when you run that thing 12 or 18 inches up above, then that minnow has a lot of freedom to move around and kind of pendulum that line out to the side. So 
you just always got to be playing with it, tweaking and, and figuring out what they want on that day. If you're using multiple people out here, just like running crankbaits in the summertime or whatever, everybody should be using something a little different. One should have their dead stick set up a foot off bottom, one maybe two feet off bottom, one with a, you know, split shot up higher so that minnow can really move around, one where it's kind of pinned down. And just if something gets bit once, twice, thrice, then we start switching things over so we can run multiple of the same thing that's working that day. Ollie? Oh. Oh, yes! Dude. Yes! Well, this is what all those marks that were running around are. Oh my word. Look at that gorgeous fish. <laughs> One second here. Let me get a better grip on him so I don't lose him here. Look at yes, that. Man. Nicely done. <laughs> well, I couldn't let Fred kick my butt all morning. <laughs> Sweet. All right, I'm going to get him right back. Oh, spicy, spicy attitude. It feels so weird to fish inside of a shack again. <laughs> I mean, I've got the door wide open, there's no heater going, so don't judge me, I'm trying to pretend to be manly. But I sat up in here because we were here literally an hour before there was light, and uh, having some light to film was definitely key. <laughs> but typically, because I fish outside so often, I've moved towards using more monos, and I, I've very rarely used braid over the last few years. Just because that monofilament, like I've said before too many times, it doesn't absorb any water or hold moisture. And that's what really causes a lot of the freezing issues if you're fishing outside. And mono just fishes so nice and smooth and has that little forgiveness, which I think is going to help you land more fish, especially at the bottom of the hole to have some of that stretch. Uh, six pound suffix advanced ice mono is what I've got on all of my walleye setups right now. And six pound is... It's unbelievable the type of fish you can catch on six pound line. It doesn't sound like it's that strong, but like we'll even use it for burbot sometimes. You know, like Jeremy Smith, six pound suff suffix advanced ice mono and he'll catch 12 pound burbot. It's crazy, crazy strong and smooth, low memory. You don't get all the coils and stuff. See all that's laying flat and nice. This rod is a 32 inch medium heavy Elliott ripping eyes. I've really gravitated towards longer rods. Uh, 32 is probably about the shortest walleye rod that I own right now. But it's still long enough that you get all the benefits of hook set and keeping the line tight, not having to lean over to reach your hole, but also just short enough that you can still fish it inside of a shack. When I'm outside hole hopping, I really prefer a 36 to 42 inch rod. There's just so many benefits and it's, it's hard to explain. I, I did a little write up on targetwalleye.com about it. And uh, basically once you fish with a longer ice rod, when you pick up those traditional 28 to 30 inch rods, you just feel at a disadvantage. It's hard to explain until you do it. Just like open water, you're using seven foot rods and then you pick up that six foot rod that you bought eight, 10 years ago. You're just like, what am I gonna do with this thing? And the reel is an Okuma Samar uh, bait feeder actually, the 1000 size. Great all around size for walleyes, six pound test. Uh, and it's got that bait feeder option where you flip this switch and if you set it up as a dead stick, you can see I just hear that clicking and I'm barely touching the line. So fish can pull that out. And when you go over, you don't have to retighten your drag or close your bail, you just reel and it engages your normal drag system. So it's got two separate drags that you adjust with the dial on the back. And something that's kind of interesting that Nick and I were talking about last time we were out is everybody puts the bait feeder reels on those really whippy soft tip dead sticks. Because traditionally dead sticks where you, you don't even see that rod tip load up, you don't want the fish to feel. But with the bait feeder reel, you can have it set up on a stouter rod because once that's engaged, that fish can still pull line and it's not feeling the resistance of that rod. You can see how I just barely am touching it and it's falling off. But then when you engage it and set the hook, you still have a whooping stick and you're more in control and can land that fish easier. So kind of just an interesting observation that dead sticks don't all have to be that super whippy load up tip if you've got a bait feeder reel. 
So I don't want to keep hammering this flashbite window thing because I know it's going to get repetitive, but it's also the point of this whole video and the only way that we really catch walleyes around here. But something else you got to keep in mind is it's, it's trial and error to find these spots because you can't be there at noon or two or even three o'clock and see if there's fish around. But you could see if there's bait fish work in the area, if there's green standing weeds and they're not all dead and laid down. So you can do a little bit of homework like that. But the problem is like you fish it outside of those windows and you're not gonna catch a fish. So it's all about being there in that morning bite, evening bite, which makes it really difficult to dial it in because every time you wanna try a new spot, it's a new day and we all have uh, only so many mornings and evenings that we can sneak out on the water. But something I do is I'll go to places where I catch them open water. And it's kind of strange because, uh, you know, there's different movements and different things fish walleyes relate to in the winter compared to spring, summer, fall. But at the same time, there's just places that hold fish basically all year round. And these big expansive feeding flats are, are something special because they have everything there that they need. They don't have to make these big giant movements. If you have deep water close, weed shallow, sand over here, you know, if you've got these big pieces of structure that have everything on them and you know that they hold fish in the summer or spring, I mean, it's just a matter of kind of where they're positioned on that during ice. man a pike or something <laughs> nice rod holder yeah it's got my other rod <laughs> that looks like a pike <laughs> yeah and it's wrapped up in my other rod i was watching oh no. my are you serious i was holding my other rod and my line started like swimming away <laughs> this pike came flying out of the weeds and grabbed everything unless it's a big walleye but it sure seems bikey. I opened my bail on that, so I'm just hoping that uh, we're gonna have a big mess. Probably is what you're saying. Yeah. Please don't pull my combo in. Look at all the line streaming out. <laughs> <laughs> Man, have we got a mess on our hands? It is what it is. At least it gets your heart pumping a little bit. I'll fix that later. You never know what you're gonna catch fishing the edges of weed flats. Rock bass, perch, crappies, bluegills, bass, walleye, and the good old pickerel. <laughs> I don't even think I can let this thing go because it's so wrapped up in everything. Both my rods are gonna go bye-bye. There we go. All right. Well, that was fun. Now maybe it really is time to get out of here. You know it's bad when the pikes start rolling in. Got the gangsters sliding in. Oh. Entertaining though. I have no idea where to start here. All right, so it's now nine o'clock. Uh, it's been a little while without grabbing a walleye and I think that window is officially closed shut. Just something that you need to keep in mind when fishing your local, normal, average lakes around home. Not the big factories like the Winnipegoshish, the Upper Red, the Leech Lake, Mille Lacs. I mean, those will also have flash bites morning and evening, but you can also catch fish during the day. And around here, it's just, it's a tight opportunity. You gotta capitalize on it, but it's so, so rewarding when you even just get that one big golden walleye to bite in the clear water. So thanks so much for watching. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you want to see next. I read every single comment and I always do my best to reply. So uh, get out there and get a few for yourself. Oof, man. I am moving slow today. I got a whopping 12 hours of sleep. 
in the last three days chasing these flash bite walleyes.